Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. I'm excited. Uh, we got Tuesdays with Charlie coming up later in the program. It's always fun to chat with that man. He's kind of crazy. <laughs> I just talked to some people this weekend that said, that's my favorite part. <laughs> That's Listening like, to your crazy that makes us feel good. So, like, well, trained professional, senile old man. Yeah, it all adds up. Uh, today is Tuesday, March the 21st. I got a quote for today. A successful man is one who can lay a firm foundation with the bricks that others throw at him. That is from Sidney Greenberg. I like that. That's a good thing. <laughs> Sometimes good thing. in life, I feel like bricks are being thrown at me. Oh. Hey, methane gas. Produced from leftover food is what they use to power the electricity grid at the LAX airport in Los Angeles. That's kind of cool. Huh. So food waste turns into electricity. And research shows that King Tut might have died from a chariot race. Like an accident in a oh, chariot. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what they think. I don't know. I don't know. They And they think that it was... Uh, some some guy named Lenny's fault. He was probably texting. Yeah, texting while charioting. <laughs> no, I don't know. They're just guessing on all that stuff. Coming up, some special things on this Tuesday. We'll get to it in a bit. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Thought you'd never ask. It's Tuesday, March the 21st, National Agriculture Day, International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. That should be every day. International Day of Forests and the Tree, okay? Uh, International Day of Nauras, don't know what that is. Memory Day is today, Afghanistan Day, National Common Courtesy Day, which again, that should be every day. We should just have common you would courtesy. Think. Yeah. National Day of Action on Syringe Exchange. Ew. Okay. National Renewable Energy Day, National Single Parent Day, it's Poetry Day, Spring Fairy Fun Day, <laughs> Twitter Day, so everything you do today has to be 140 characters or less, and World Down Syndrome Day. So a lot of things going on today, and uh, of all of those, whatever you're going to do, you have to push it out through Twitter, that way you get to celebrate both. See? It's a good plan. John and Heidi. Hey, it's John and Heidi. Join us for 80s in the Sand, a week-long 80s event this November 11th through the 18th in beautiful Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic. Meet and listen to 80s bands like Loverboy, Starship, Howard Jones, and many more. Plus, meet 80s icons from the movies like Anthony Michael Hall, Andrew McCarthy, and several others. Get all the details at 80sinthesand.com. Use promo code RADIO to get a $200 immediate refund per person. Book your week-long 80s vacation now at 80sinthesand.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. Take a listen to this. A seven-foot-tall athlete was too tall to fly, apparently. This happened in in Siberia. So, you know, let's keep that in mind when we listen to the rest of the story. Police were called to haul a seven-foot-tall volleyball player off of an airplane for being too tall. Police were called. That seems a bit extreme. Listen to the rest, though. The fiasco started when the flight attendant argued with a 20-year-old athlete, Alexander Kimarov, and said, you're blocking the aisle with your legs. Okay. Things somehow escalated quite quickly. Cabin crew was called in. They had to call the police, and they removed him from a flight from Siberia to Russia, uh, the capital of Russia. Moscow is where he was going. Even though he has flown before, somehow this time his legs were a big okay. problem. If he had, if he was being a jerk and was had his legs flung out yeah. into the aisle, though, I mean, yeah, I you're going to be uncomfortable. You're and, tall. That sucks. But and here's the thing, I would say, if you are extremely tall, sit in the emergency row. Yeah, exactly. I was going to just say that I have done that before, not because I'm tall, but because nobody wanted to sit there. Right. I was like, I'll sit over there. That's cool. Because they're like, well, I don't know if I can handle. There was a guy there saying, I don't know if I can handle the pressure if there was an accident. I'm like, if there's an accident, none of us are getting out that door anyway. Exactly. But I'll sit over there. Trust me. I'll be just fine with all the leg room. But that's where he have should have accident. been. If if there was an issue, that they should have immediately moved him to the exit row. And if there was an accident, I would certainly be able to. I'm pretty good under pressure. I'd have been able to handle the turning the knob, you know, and jumping out and whatever. <laughs> I didn't really pay attention to the rules, but I think there was something about Something. I should pay attention maybe next time. I have to sit there. <laughs> but anyway, sit there. You have more leg room. And I, I can only imagine that if he was going to play volleyball, there was a whole team on this. So all of the other tall people didn't have any problems? 
Maybe he's just I a think, tall volleyball well, player that was going somewhere else. I think that he was doing something wrong. I think he was being naughty. I think that's what happened. It just happened to be that he was tall. Anyway, you know it's true? Because you heard it on the radio. John and Heidi. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. Don't you hate it when you forget you had all that marijuana in a cooler and then you <laughs> donate it to Goodwill? <laughs> yeah, somebody donated a cooler uh, in Goodwill, uh, to a Goodwill rather, in Washington State last week. The police are saying, we'd love it if you come forward. We'd love to give this cooler back to you. <laughs> And arrest you. Exactly. Goodwill employees in Monroe, Washington, got a surprise when they cracked open a donated cooler and it was full of marijuana. It contained 3.75 pounds of pot, estimated street value, Heidi, twenty four thousand wow. dollars. So does Goodwill get to sell that then on the shelves? In I there? don't. Would think it be at so. a discount? Do you think? If it, I don't, I'm think just they wondering get how that works. That. Because in the state of Washington, it's it's legal, isn't it? I don't know. I guess I've never been there, but I was thinking that was one of the states that legalized marijuana. Uh-huh. So if if they, I think they have. So if they have, so if they have, they couldn't arrest him if he comes forward if okay. it's legal. Uh, that's probably true. So could could they sell it then? I don't know how that works. I really don't think that's how it works. <laughs> well, I don't a, think Goodwill can popular, start selling. Most popular Goodwill in Washington <laughs> all of a sudden. All right. We got some moment of uh, your moment of duh coming up. I got two of them. They're on the way. John and Heidi. Now your moments of duh. I say moments because I have two. They're both really quick stories. So I thought, I'm going to use them both today. All right. So we're going to start in California where... A man broke into a woman's home and fell asleep on her sofa. And, oh, by the way, he was naked. I maybe should have maybe should have thrown that in there in the beginning. So that's why it's such a weird story. Because a naked man broke into a woman's home and took a nap on her couch. Okay. <laughs> he was arrested. <laughs> he did not have any ID on his person. So, <laughs> And here's another story from California. And it's also a bizarre story. A robot was released into the California desert. Okay, I'll say it the right way. A robot. But if you ever watch the Goldbergs, you know why I said robot. That's what, you know, Papa on Goldberg says. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Murray? Pops. Murray. No, the dad. Murray is the dad. Yeah, that's the one oh. that says robot. Oh, okay. Anyway, again, the story in its entirety, mm-hmm. a robot was released into the California desert and was programmed to avoid humans at all costs, like avoid human contact. Okay. Why are we doing this? Yeah, what's the point? We're setting a robot free in the desert and it's saying we don't want it to talk to humans. Let's now just track it and see what happens. I think this is a bad idea. That's the beginning of a scary movie. I'm just telling you. That is a moment of duh right there. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now your Scoop of the Day. In Oregon, firefighters rescued a family pet from a house fire. So far, that doesn't sound shocking, does it? No. But the family pet was a gigantic 20-pound iguana. Yeah. 20 pounds? Yeah, I didn't even know they could get that big. And they had to put an oxygen mask over his face on the way out. I can only imagine people snapping photos of that. Holy cow. A man passed out on a Southwest Airlines flight. But the good news is, when they said, is there a doctor on board, 20 doctors were on board. (laughs) That's awesome. It's like, this guy's not feeling well. Are there any doctors on board? The whole first class. Yeah, we're all doctors. (laughs) Wow. What are the odds of that? Uh, A Texas guy. Uh, there went into a convenience store, demanded money. He had a gun. He was given money. He then told the clerk, open the safe. The clerk said, I can't open the safe. And they said, okay, well then give me some lottery tickets. <laughs> so the clerk went over and, and got some lottery tickets. And he said, oh, I only want two. And I want a pack of smokes. And then he took Aww. off. <laughs> he took two lottery tickets, a pack of smokes, a little bit of cash. He was caught a short time later. So <laughs> apparently not the best crook. Scientists say they are trying to figure out why humpback whales are now being seen in large groups when previously they were somewhat thought to be like solitary creatures. Hmm. So in the past, they were always found like one at a time. Now all of a sudden, they've got like herds of humpback whales hanging out together. So I wonder what's going on there. 
I don't know. That's don't know interesting, either. though. I thought maybe you would know because you know you know this kind of stuff. I really don't. I you haven't don't? studied okay. whales for years. Oh, okay. You, you haven't you haven't been doing that. Hey, more men than women take teddy bears to bed as a partner substitute when sleeping alone. Okay, guys, raise your hand That's if you'd admit adorable. to that. Adorable. Fifteen percent of women resorted to cuddling with a teddy bear, but as many as a teddy bear, rather not a teddy bear. That's a whole different story. Uh, as many as twenty percent of men admitted to being big, big softies, and those are just the ones that admit opting it. for teddy bears. Of the two thousand people surveyed, sixty-three percent said they need a bedtime cuddle to sleep. Many of them say they resort to hugging a pillow. I've, I've done that. That's what I do. I've never once went out and bought a teddy bear when you're not around. I'm not going to snuggle with. I'm not cheating <laughs> on you with a teddy bear. Just so you know. Gonna but you snuggle snuggled with a, with a pillow? Oh, yeah. I'll put my arm around a pillow. Do you? I give it a little kiss at night. Good night, <laughs> Heidi. It's a lot quieter than you are. You know what it is. The pillow doesn't snore or nothing. She's my wife, by the way. So it's, it's okay that I know that she snores. Hey, in Louisiana, an unidentified man broke into a home, went straight for the refrigerator, and started to eat. The man ate some apples and we some talked about cookies. This. No, this is a different dude. No, Here. it's not. Because Has I said be. you don't keep apples and cookies in the refrigerator. Really? This is the exact Poured himself same some orange story. juice yes. and heated up some clam chowder, <laughs> then fell asleep naked in the bedroom. Yes, this is the same story. How did I not remember that? Because I said, you don't keep apples and cookies in the refrigerator. And you said, that's what you took away from this story. <laughs> not that he fell asleep that's naked. That's right. The- <laughs> I do remember that now. Wow. Well, I wonder if I've talked about this already. <laughs> ben Affleck. Have I talked about this? Ben Affleck just completed a stint in rehab. Do we talk about that? I don't think so. Okay. Says in a post on Facebook, he uh, confirmed that he recently sought treatment for addiction to alcohol. Says, I have completed treatment for alcohol addiction, something I've dealt with in the past and will continue to confront. I want to live to life to the fullest and be the best father I can be. And for that, Ben Affleck, I'm quite proud of you. Because if you're taking care of yourself, you're saying, hey, I got a problem and I want to fix it. Amen to that, brother. That's a good idea. And and it's nothing to be ashamed of. So if you guys want to hate on Ben, you got to get through me first. Because anybody that knows they've got an issue and they're getting it taken care of, I'm proud of them. You too, if, if that's something that you're going through. And finally, scientists... I read he has halitosis. Like so really what? bad. I don't even know who that what that means. What are you talking about? Really, really, really bad breath. Like probably chronic because of the drinking. Bad so breath. the good news is that's going to go away. <laughs> and our final story. Scientists are warning that microfibers from our athletic wear are making their way to the ocean where they're harming sea life. So quit wearing yoga pants, apparently. In the ocean. Somehow that's harming <laughs> otters and such. I don't know. I have no clue what's going on with the seals and their stretchy pants. I don't know. Anyway, that's going to do it for your scoop of the day. Radio advertising works. When it's done right, it works even better. There are many things you can do to get a better response, and shouting sale really isn't the best thing, believe it or not. Did you know that when you put words to music, they're nine times more memorable? If you're trying to get people to remember your company, consider a jingle. We work with one of the very best jingle companies in the business, and we'd love to use music to help you grow your company. Learn more and hear examples at RadioReallyWorks.com. That's RadioReallyWorks.com. And it's time right now for my favorite program, something we do every Tuesday just because we can. We pick up the phone and we call my father-in-law for a little segment we like to call Tuesdays, Tuesdays with, with Charlie. Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? Well, you know, it's Tuesday. Yeah. I'm not happy, but I'm here. Well, we're glad <laughs> that you're happy. here. We're glad that you're here. Uh, he was screening his calls, by the way, when we called. He let it go to voicemail. <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty good. I'm glad we made the cut. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I didn't want to pick up, but Sandra said do it. Yeah. <laughs> You better. They're just going to call back. They're persistent. So what kind of stuff are we going to learn about today, Charlie? Uh, well, let me see here. Let's start with that. You like airplanes? I do. Yeah. I don't. They're the best way to fly. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> there was a multitude of answers there. We could go with A, B, or C, or D. <laughs> we'll just we'll just move on with what you have. <laughs> okay, okay. On airplanes, you know what the speed is during takeoff? No. Um, hundred miles an hour. Hundred and sixty to one hundred and eighty. No kidding. How about landing? Uh, probably two hundred miles an hour. One fifty to one sixty. No kidding. Hmm. Well, son of a It's dude. awfully fast. I know that. that. Is. Do you ever sit there and when they're taking off and just throws you back in the seat? Yeah. yeah. That's like zero to one hundred and eighty in 
15 seconds. It, yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. I do, too. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? What is today, Tuesday? It is. <laughs> must, must be. I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> hey, you like banana splits? We do, yeah, banana splits. I wouldn't say they're like my favorite, but I, I've, I've had them before. They're good. Oh, I wouldn't turn one down. No, me neither. It was invented by 23-year-old David Strickler. Really? In Pennsylvania. Now, do you know in what year? Uh, 1922. Oh, you're close. 1904. Well, 1904. See, I, I wasn't going back far enough. I bet that bastard had some ice cream and some bananas, <laughs> and he didn't know what to do with them, so he put them together and put some chocolate on there and strawberries. And He had bananas that were about to go bad, yeah. and he wanted ice cream. He's like, I'll just eat them together. I put them together. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Hence, banana split. There you go. That's cool. Hey, guy, I like that guy because he's pretty good. I, like, I love him. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got one last thing here for you. All right, what's that? <laughs> Apparently, we have a bowler in the family, right? I think we got a couple of bowlers in the family. Well, we got Andy. Yeah. Yeah. He like teaches it or something. Yeah, yeah he's and really. He good. and his brother both gotten a couple three hundred games, so yeah. they're good. I had I had a three hundred game once. It took me ten times to do it, but I had one. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy five here, twenty five here, <laughs> ten games. I had to have three hundred. Boom! That's all it takes. Okay, in bowling, yeah. on a strike, a right-handed bowler's ball actually connects with the one three five nine pin. Okay. A left-handed bowler, same thing with only the one two five eight pins. Huh. So if you bowl a perfect 300 game, your ball will only hit 48 pins. No kidding. Huh. And that'll do the trick. Well, yeah. Well, that's I think you should go out there and practice. I should do that. Practice? Don't take fluff with you, Zokers. <laughs> Every time she bowls, she falls down. Hey, she has a couple of times. There's beer there. I can she, socialize. <laughs> my, my, my favorite, Charlie, is when she put her knee out bowling. And I, I only wish I was kidding. I wear a brace now yeah. when I bowl. Charlie, are you ready for a question? Okay, whip it on me. All right, here's your question. In the United States of America, on average, what percent of a city's land is paved? So this would include parking lots, driveways, and roads. What percentage of the land is paved in a city in the United States? Sixty-eight percent. No, it's about fifty percent of the of the land is paved. So fifty percent covers all of the roads, the parking lots, and only the other fifty percent would be the lawns and the parks, and you know. That's crazy. Yeah. So about half depends of depends on which city. I bet it's higher than that in like New York City. I don't know. It says on average, so you're probably right. Yeah. But if you I was, average, I was playing the odds. Yeah. Yeah, you see. did good. Very good. Well, Charlie, it was always interesting and fun to talk to you. We'll we'll catch up again next Tuesday. It's kind of an experience, isn't it? It is. It is. A good experience. (laughs) Well, if you call me next Tuesday, I might answer the phone. All right. Well, we will call. Bye, Charlie. Bye, Dad. Bye, Fluff. Bye, John. Bye-bye. My father-in-law right there. We talk to him every Tuesday (laughs) just because we can. It's a little program we like to call Tuesdays Tuesdays with with Charlie. Charlie. Many people go to college, but when they graduate, they've racked up a ton of debt. Not everyone, though. Matthew Einstone saved over $70,000 on a top-rate education. Then, after everyone wanted to know how he did it, he built a system to show you how to do it, too. Learn how you can use his system for yourself or for your kids. Go to FreeEducationUniversity.com. Watch a few videos there for free. Sign up now and get a free 60-minute private consultation with Matthew. That's FreeEducationUniversity.com. Use promo code RADIO20 to save 20%. John and Heidi. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The labels for Crayola crayons, even though they come in a lot of different colors, like 60 or whatever colors, there's only 18 different colored labels. So the labels are the same I've color. I've never thought about that. Yeah, so there's 18 different colored labels. I'll have to check next time I open yeah. a big box of crayons. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? At just four years of age, Mozart was able to learn a piece of music in under a half hour. That's crazy. It is crazy. I don't know if you know this, but he was a huge fan of Lady Gaga. <laughs> just kidding. She didn't exist yet. I was trying to get Heidi to laugh, and she just gave me a really dirty <laughs> look because that was like a dad joke. Hey, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The Arctic Ocean is the smallest and shallowest ocean. Okay. So shallow, it talks about all the other oceans. Wow. It's mostly covered by ice and uh, icebergs. <laughs> and our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? <laughs> <laughs> this did not go well. The largest U.S. city in area 
is Juneau, Alaska. Can you imagine that? Hmm. As far as how wide it's spaced out. Yeah, the largest U.S. city in area, Juneau, Alaska, 3,108 square miles. In comparison, Los Angeles, only 458 square miles. Wow. So it's like a lot bigger, a lot bigger than Los Angeles. Population is like 88 people. <laughs> so I have never been it, there. There's more than that. But All right. A couple of fun facts for you right here on a Tuesday. John and Heidi. This is Richard Lustig, the world's first and only seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Since I endorsed Lottolicious, I have won something every single draw. They do all the work. You don't have to worry about running to the store to buy your tickets. They take care of all that. So if you're looking for the best way to play the lottery, to give yourself the best chance of winning, go to RadioLottoPool.com and join today. Again, that website is RadioLottoPool.com. All right, Heidi's going to love this. I have a list of the lamest, lamest, lamest things, things, things of all time, time, time. You ready for this? Was that one of them? My, my intro? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Are you this sure? Is, <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Maxim Magazine sent this to me. Recently, they released a list of the lamest things of all time. The list includes dogs in handbags. It says the human body I agree. already carries around enough annoying little life forms, so don't add another one. So don't put a dog in a bag and drag it around. I agree. The dog can walk, or you just leave the dog at home. Uh, next on the list, lottery winners that keep their jobs. That Agreed. sweet little Waffle House manager that has a you know the gig, but they already won the lottery. Give it up. Agreed. Let, Let somebody, somebody else, else have, have that job. Uh, another thing on the list of the lamest things of all time, vegan bacon. They say, if you want bacon, just have some bacon. No matter how much you pretend, Agreed. it's not going to be bacon. So well, either same thing have bacon with or don't. Vegan hamburgers and well, vegan if you, I, anything. If, if, if you want saying. meat, eat meat. There you go. Next, cell phone slash smartphone holsters. I've got some friends that use those still. <laughs> I don't. I put mine in my pocket. It says even on the heavy skid side, phones weigh almost nothing. You don't need a holster like a cop with a Galaxy uh, ray gun. So you're going to be okay. You can just put it in your pocket. But a lot of phones now don't fit in your pockets. Oh, they do too. How small are your pockets or how big are your phones? Uh, women's pockets are very, very, okay. very small. I have never seen a woman carrying a holster phone Me anywhere. Either. It's always guys that it's have plenty purse. of room in their pockets. But I'm just saying, anyway. a lot of people have very small pockets. Okay. And another thing on the list of lamest things of all time, people who stop at the bottom of an escalator, the ride is over, continue 20 more paces. So like walk, get away from the end so you don't have a bottleneck of traffic. And last one would be... I'm going to just skip it because Heidi's going to make fun of me. No, go ahead. I'd like to hear this. <sighs> Socks with sandals. <laughs> I agree completely. <laughs> I do that every morning. <laughs> but I put shoes on afterwards. It drives so. me crazy. And mine are, mine are Crocs with <laughs> socks. That's it. Anyway. That's even better. I'm not even going to ask you which one was the lamest because I already know. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Hey, it's John and Heidi inviting you to join us for a party in paradise. This is a week-long event with 80s music from over a dozen awesome bands. And 80s movie and TV icons like Anthony Michael Hall, Andrew McCarthy, and several others. Get all the details at 80sinthesand.com. Use promo code radio to get a $200 immediate refund per person. We'll even get together to have some drinks with you. Book your week-long 80s vacation now at 80sinthesand.com. That's 80sinthesand.com. Do you ever read Cosmo magazine? I used to. Uh, I don't, but I've got the top four reasons men break up with women according to Cosmo magazine. Let's see if we agree with this. Number one, you had an agenda, meaning men are commitment phobia, uh, commitment phobes, and you might have done something to push the relationship too fast. Yeah, I can see that. I don't know about if that. If you're scaring them. Uh, you, you couldn't keep your jealousy in check. Whether yeah. you're suspicious of his female friends or coworkers, or you just don't like the way he looked at some waitress, jealousy is often a deal breaker. I agree with that one. Yeah. You got too comfortable too fast. Every night you were hanging out on the couch in your sweats, and he still wanted to think of you as a babe in a little black Farting dress. Farting and belching. <laughs> you did that on our first date. Finishing his food. <laughs> you're like, listen to me bar- uh, belch the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was like, will you marry me? Uh, <laughs> I did not. Do that. I have never done that. I would no, like to she, make that very she clear. Really do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the agenda for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one, infidelity. It's the number one reason oh, men break up with well, women. Duh. Either you did or he did or somebody did. So there you go. So Cosmo, I agree with you. Probably for the first time ever. There you go. Coming up, some dumb inventions we're going to chat about. John and Heidi. I kind of got a lot of lists today, Heidi. This one's from Time. They came out with a list of the worst inventions of all time. Okay. So uh, in a minute or less, we're going to try to get through all of these. Uh, oh, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way to the Wait, top. Wait, how many are there? There's only like 10. Okay. So plastic grocery bags, they say, are one of the worst inventions of all time. I agree with that. See, I don't. Anytime they ask me if I want paper or plastic, I always they say paper. They never ask. I get they asked. They don't want to give up the paper bags. Those are good bags. I get asked. I don't know. I, I want to let you know. I was generation one on p- paper or plastic because I was a paper carryout boy and I had the first generation of plastic bags. Nothing would fit in those. You put a loaf of bread and it would fall off the bottom. They were terrible. Yeah, I still uh, am not a huge fan, and I end up with so very many far on of this them. List, have we? No. Uh, next, pop-up ads. Number three. Agreed. Crocs. Then tanning beds. <laughs> Crocs. <laughs> they made it on my list. Agreed. <laughs> parachute jacket. I don't know what that is. The Ford you don't Pinto. remember parachute jackets and uh-uh. parachute pants? I remember parachute pants. Yeah, there was a auto-tune. jacket made out of the same material. Hydrogenated oh, oil. Auto tune. Yes. Farmville. Subprime mortgages and the number one on the list of the worst inventions of all time, New Coke. I really didn't mind New Coke. I didn't like it. It wasn't was Coke. Right. Yeah, well, there you go. Worst inventions of all time, according to Time. John and Heidi. Many people go to college, but when they graduate, they've racked up a ton of debt. Not everyone, though. Matthew Einstein saved over $70,000 on a top-rate education. Then, after everyone wanted to know how he did it, he built a system to show you how to do it, too. Learn how you can use this system for yourself or for your kids. Go to FreeEducationUniversity.com. Sign up now and get a free 60-minute private consultation with Matthew. That's FreeEducationUniversity.com. Use promo code RADIO20 to save 20%. John and Heidi. All right, get ready for Heidi's head to explode. Uh oh. I've got a study here that she's going to love. Uh, we have a lot of studies we talk about on this mm-hmm. program. And we've talked about one that contradicts this one. You've heard of the five second rule, right? Yeah. The joke is if you drop food on the ground, you have <clears throat> five seconds to pick it up before it gets germy. I'd say well, you've got until it's made it into your dog's mouth to pick it up. I don't care if it's been on the floor for an hour and a half. As long as your dog hasn't licked it or put it in their mouth, it's fair game. You're still good. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody step on that? No. Okay. I'm going to pick it up. I'll just put it back on the grill. Mix it in with the other hot dogs. It'll be fine. <laughs> well, a germ expert at Ashton University in Birmingham, England, says the five-second rule is pretty much right. Professor Anthony Hilton claims... There is little to be concerned about if the food is only on the ground or on the floor momentarily. However, he adds, eating food that has spent a few moments on the floor can never be entirely risk-free, end quote. But we just read a study, like a month ago, that is exactly the opposite of that, saying if it touches the ground at all, it's off limits. There is no five-second rule. Yeah, and I called a big OBS to this. I know. I was like, no. But I thought maybe your head was going to explode because I just told you. I've eaten stuff off of the floor many, many times. And our son eats food out of his car. He'll leave stuff in his car for like three days. (laughs) And he'll come walking in eating something. I was like, where where did you go? It's like it was in the car. I'm like, Troy, don't leave food in your car. In his defense, it's been wintertime. Yeah, it was cold out. It was cold, so it's like a freezer out there. still, I'm like, just don't get in the habit of doing that. (laughs) <laughs> of all the things to bring to our house, he brings over shrimp cocktail. <laughs> what the? Who travels with that? <laughs> it's in our fridge right now. And Heidi's he loves allergic, it. Heidi's allergic to shrimp. I just won't eat it. I was I'm like, fine. Don't, please don't bring shrimp into our home. He likes it. It's fine. As long we'll as he's eating and shrimp around. is good for you. You can't leave that in your car. I just want to make sure you know that's fine. <laughs> all right. We got some good news to get to. That's on the way. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. 
We always try to wrap things up around here with some good news, and I think this is good news. This comes from Milwaukee. The county transit system there is recognizing the extraordinary employee from a March 13th through 19th. Oh, they're recognizing all their employees as part of a week that's been named for their uh, excellence week. But there's one bus driver in particular that's being really uh, kind of put out in front of the rest, Heidi. Okay. Denise Wilson. She's been a bus driver with MCTS for about six months. On January 28th, her last break at midnight was approaching, and she almost passed up her opportunity to take the break. She was tempted to just go, you know, finish the shift and get it done with. But she decided, okay, I should probably get some fresh air. She got out to get some fresh air. It was 22 degrees that night, and there was a little boy wandering in the street alone, Mm. a five-year-old. Oh, my gosh. Had barely any clothing on in the freezing cold temperatures. Didn't even have shoes on. Wilson took him across the street to a gas station in search of clothing to keep the boy warm. Somebody gave her an oversized shirt to put on the boy, and they covered him up in a jacket and fed him a snack. She did everything she could to to make sure he was warm, and, and they waited for police to arrive. They determined the whole situation was an accident. The boy managed to wander away from home. Thankfully, Wilson's heroic actions ensured that this accident did not become a very, very serious situation. She said, I would not choose to describe myself as a hero. She said, I don't see it like that. I just know that I'm a child of God. And it says, a lot of time we try to do what's right, and it all worked out. I would think anybody would help a child. I would hope so. I, I can't imagine anyone that. would just allow that like, child yeah, to wander around sure on the street, like drive by and say, oh, did you see that toddler? I'm okay, sure let's keep going. Yeah, he didn't have shoes on in the yeah, cold. And it's no, 22 I, degrees out. There. I'm sure anybody would have I would helped. Hope I so. think that's wonderful. Well, I'm really glad that she took care of that. I've got a link to that on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday.